Guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you've seen my other videos, then you know that I like to build my own tools. And I've had a few people reach out and ask me if I could make a video about how I built those tools. Ugh, you kidding me? I just had a bee land on my hand and it attempted to bite me, literally, with its pinchers, not its stinger. That kind of freaked me out a bit. <laughs> so I've had some people reach out asking if I could make a video about how I built a couple of the tools. And those tools are, one of them is a tram gauge and the other one is a pulling bridge. Now if you're doing body work, then having a tram gauge is pretty much a must. This thing allows you to check for symmetry, for example, under the hood. Now, this vehicle sustained front end damage where the front of the car had shifted over. And then after I made all of my pulls, I used the tram gauge to make sure that my diagonals were identical. And if they are, then it means that my radiator support is right where it's supposed to be. And then if the diagonals were not the same, then I know that I would still have to pull the nose some more. The cheapest tram gauge I was able to find online was right around $200 and they go up from that point on and I've seen some go for as much as six or 700 bucks. Now you can make your own for under $20 in materials and I will show you how. Now the pulling bridge is a pretty cool tool that I use to raise a collapsed roof on a Honda Civic. Now if you guys want to see how I did that repair, go ahead and click on the link above. And just like the tram gauge, this thing is also pretty simple to build and it's very inexpensive. So let's begin. Okay guys, in this video we'll be building a, uh, I believe it's called a pulling bridge. Pretty much its function is to pull out larger dents. Or like in this case, having to raise an entire roof line. So these are the materials that we'll be needing. This is the main beam and since we're working on the roof I'm trying to get a longer beam going. So that one is about, I believe it's four and a half feet long. These are going to be our legs. It's a um, 5 8 threaded rod. The reason I'm using threaded rods is uh, this way if I got to make the legs shorter or longer, I can just, uh, you know, turn them in or turn them out and just kind of, you know, get them where I need them to be. So these are two legs and this is going to be our pulling rod and it's, it's thinner. It's about, it's half inch. So the first thing we'll need to do is the measurements. So this is just my, this is my own design. So this is a two inch. And uh, the height is, uh, what, uh, almost two inches. But we're going to cut these guys down because this is our main beam. And if I slide this guy over, see the side to side play? You see that gap right there, right on the side? That's OK. However, this bottom gap is not OK. So we're going to have to modify this piece right here. And if you look, I drew my line a little bit above the beam. Now I'm going to make the cut here and same thing on the other side. I'm going to grind down these edges until this plate is flat and flush. So after some grinding, I ended up taking off some more off of these two edges and also on these two. So this is what I got. I get minimal slap. Time to weld it up. Now I'm going to clean up this weld. Okay, so got all three of them done. So yeah, they just slip right over. So very minimal play up and down. I mean, the gap there is, I don't know, 16th of an inch maybe? So one, two, three. Cool. So the legs will be adjustable. So you see I got two nuts on there. I'm going to weld this leg on just like so. Alright, this 
what we got. So I got a chain link to make a hook out of it and then now I'm going to attach it to this nut. So after a little bit of cleanup, this is what we got. Um, I don't want it to rust, so I'm going to give it a quick coat of primer. So next step, I'm going to drill this size hole in the square tubing. So I took one of the legs, one of the rods for the legs, and then I, it was too thick to fit in the tubing, like so, with its threads in place. So I had to uh, grind them down, so this way I could fit about half an inch or so inside of the tubing. So this way, I know this leg is not gonna go anywhere once it's welded in. So after giving all the uh, areas that would possibly rust a quick coat of primer, I'm going to use a self-adhering piece of felt. Cool, I only have one shot at it, so i got to make it right. Now I'm going to shorten a couple of these bolts. So I'm going to put them together like so. That's going to be my wing nut. So after welding it up, this is what we have. And uh, yeah. Okay, all is made. Last step is to assemble it all. This is going to be my locking nut right here. So bring this guy in I gotta get it nice and tight so this way there's no way that the nut that this um, hook is uh, welded onto will ever come loose So this is it. So later on, when these keys will be welded on to the metal that I'll be pulling, this rod's gonna go in like so. You get the idea. Done. Now let's build a tram gauge. So the main part is this square tube. This is all it is. And it measures out to be about half an inch or about 13 millimeters. Now your materials don't have to be same exact size as mine. I'm just using the stuff that I had sitting around my garage so I didn't have to go out and buy more materials. This tube is a bit on the long side. You could probably get just get away with using something that's about five feet or about 150 centimeters long. That'll do just fine. I'll be using this tube. The measurements on it are three quarters of an inch or about 19 millimeters. And that will be my sleeve that will go over this tube right here. Now you want your fitment of this tube inside of this one to be pretty tight. You don't want there to be a whole lot of slop because if you do have quite a bit of slop, then you won't get a precise measurement. And so these are the last three items that I have. Actually what they are is they are two tubes and a little rod. Now I was hoping that somewhere in a garage I would have a rod like this to be a diameter of this tube right here so I can just slide it inside of this tube and you see that's a pretty tight fitment. There is barely any movement there at all. But since this is not a rod but a tube, I'm going to use this rod to slide it inside of this one here. So I'm going to measure out about inch and a quarter or about 32 millimeters and I'll do that twice. 
one, two. And same thing on this tube, one, two. First, I'm going to cut the round tube. A little bit of cleanup. Now I'm going to mark a spot right in between these two notches. I don't have to be 100% precise, just kind of eye it. So right there, and also another mark in between this notch and the end of the tube. Close enough. Now I'm gonna take my piece of tube and make sure that it's square and line it up with that mark. Right about there. Now I'll repeat the same thing with a second tube. Now I'm gonna make my cuts right at the inch and a quarter marks. And a bit more cleanup. Now it's time to drill some holes. So after digging through my bucket of bolts, I found a few bolts that look like this one. So for the next step, I'm going to use these bolts to make the cut right where the threads begin. And then I'm going to cut off the head of the bolt. So I'll end up with two sections, the threaded section and then the unthreaded. So the thinnest rod that we have is going to be our pointer rod, the one that's going to slide into one of the tubes. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this thing in half. So now I want to sharpen one end of this rod to a point, and I want that point to be dead in the center. And so the way to do that would be, I'm going to put the rod into a drill. Perfect, now I gotta do the same thing to the other rod. So this tube is about 11 inches long or about 28 centimeters. I'm gonna cut it down in half. So now I'm just gonna slide the sharpened rod into the thinnest tube that I got. And I'm gonna leave about an inch or so of the rod exposed. And this is all just personal preference. So one inch, about two and a half centimeters. So this is what we got. Let's put it together. And now we just slide it onto the big square tube. And it's nice and solid. So this square tube that I used is made out of aluminum. The reason I chose it just to uh, make it a little lighter. So uh, this is what we got. Let's test it out. Perfect. Guys, thank you for sticking around. I really hope you liked the video. And uh, what do you think? Can you build one of these? I think you can. I think just about anyone can. These things are really simple. I'm using this tram gauge all the time. So I would say it's a must have. So you should really go ahead and build it. So as usual, if you haven't done it already, go ahead and subscribe and don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks again and we'll see you soon.